the South Florida Bulls. And boy, um, Jeff Scott just has not had it easy, has he? <laughs> since, since he left Clemson, he thought South Florida was going to be one of those kind of spots where he could come in and take over. Charlie Strong won 10 games there. Willie Taggart won 11 games there. But what Charlie Strong did to that roster really hurt it going forward. This team, PPA margin last year was number 117. Their net points per drive was number 119. Uh, They were number 127 in total plays per game, number 116 in turnover margin, number 125 in penalties per game. Like, they were bad all across the board. They're number nine in returning production, so maybe that's something to look at. Uh, aside from that, I mean, they went 2-10 and 10 last year. Post-game win expectancy said the same thing, 2.29 and 9.71. Uh, their projected SP Plus record is 4-8, and eight, but I, I couldn't get them there. Uh, when I look at this, like, Jerry Bohannon comes in. He was the starting quarterback at Baylor last year. I would imagine he comes in to take the starting job from Timmy McClain. Like, Timmy McClain was good in spots last year, but most of it was with his legs. I... I think Bohannon's the steadier hand. I think there's less mistakes here. Like it, this, it just makes a little more sense to me that he would be your starter. You do have a ton of returning experience on offense. Uh, they're number nine in that regard. On defense, they're number 26, which is still pretty good. That 74% on offense was 84%. Uh, the roster strength, pretty good. Number 73 in the country. Like it, That's okay. They do have a new D.C., Bob Shoup, who was the D.C. at Mississippi State under Joe Moorhead, had the number one defense in 2018. Uh, He was just an analyst at Miami last year trying to pick and choose what his next spot would be. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to dive into a whole lot of this. They've they've got 16 new transfers. 13 of them are uh, P5 transfers. Um, It looks like a talent upgrade, but can they gel quickly? Like, it, this is a talented roster, but at the same time, it's been a talented roster. So you gotta you gotta figure out what in the world can Jeff Scott do differently. And I don't know that there's an answer for this. Like I could see him anywhere from one and eleven to like four and eight, but I don't know that it gets better than that. It's a pretty brutal schedule. And then when you look at three of the first four games, you got BYU, Howard at Florida, and at Louisville. Like I think they're gonna start one and three, even if they showed up to be pretty good. So I, I've got them at two and ten. What have, what have you got this bunch? Two and ten. They're not good. They're going to struggle. It, it's not going to go well for them. Um, I, I don't know that they have the answer there right now, um, and 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 I, I really couldn't figure out what what to do to get them back to where they used to be. The South Florida Bulls used to be awesome. They used to be fun. They used to be incredible to watch. Like they were entertaining. They played good football. They could compete with, like, the bigger boys of the G5. They were one of the big boys of the G5 and, and, and could give scares to the P5 schools that would come play them. They're just so far from that right now. Nobody in the country is afraid of them. No. I mean, this is this is not a good football team. This is not a good football team. So we, we both have them at 2-10. and 10, um, And I just, I got to wonder, like, how long do you give Jeff Scott there? It, but I don't know that it's necessarily his fault. I think the the college football landscape is changing, and if you were already in a rut, it is much more difficult to get yourself out of that rut. But hang on now. No, we, I, we disagree a little bit there. It's easier to pull yourself out now because of the transfer portal. You are in the back door of Florida, baby. You're in Tampa. You got a ton of money around there. There's no reason you should not be hanging with the Memphises of the world. There's just no reason for you to not be tit for tat with with the the other schools like that. You're bigger than them. You have more money than them, and you have more talent locally than they do. There's just there's just no excuse for it. You might be onto something there. You might be onto something because you could go in and transfer a bunch of kids, and you've got local money. Like there's just no reason you can't be good fast. You yeah, just, I'm just not hearing that, man. He's just not the guy. And as soon you know my opinion, as soon as you know you got the wrong guy, you, you flush it. Yeah, and that, that might be what they have to do. If they go two and ten again, uh that that might be that might be the death nail. That might be what that is. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, 
at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.